Todd Bowles is sticking to his guns, and it's a big mistake. You are Locked On Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to the Locked On Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we thank you for making us your first listen or view of the day. I am James Yarko, rejoined by my co-host, one Mr. David Harrison. You can check out his work over at Sports Illustrated's BucksGameDay.com. Check me out over at SB Nation's BucksNation.com. And of course, follow everything on Twitter at Locked On Bucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks, and at D Harrison 82. You guys don't know this, but that cold open that we recorded for you took much longer than it should have. We are already six minutes into our show taping. Fortunately for you, and through the magic of James, James Yarko's editing skills, it's not six minutes into the show for you, but it's definitely six minutes into the recording. But we thank you for sticking with us, making this first view or listen of the day. All we ask of you from here this point on, guys, that you please just please don't flip to another locked on show and then back to this one. Like, don't pause us, go over to locked on Ravens to hear what Kevin Ostriker has to say for a segment and then come back to us because that kind of back and forth and waffling and flip flopping would only cause cause an inconsistent play experience for you and for us. And quite honestly, it would just create a lot of chaos, which is why an NFL coach would never do something similar to what I just described, James. Yeah, no, not at all, unless you're named Todd Bowles, who was asked about the guard by committee situation mm. uh, against the Carolina Panthers on Sunday, where he started Luke Gedeke. It was like, now let's let Nick Leverett play. Yeah. But then we're going to come out for the second half and be like, hey, Luke, how about going back out on the field? And then you're like, hey, Luke, come back. Come back. We're going to let Nick go play. It's Nick's turn. So we've got starting at left guard, we've got Leverkey. Lever keep that's perfect. Todd Bowles was asked about it when he spoke to the media on Monday. And he said, quote, well, they are both very physical. Both were neck and neck going into training camp, going into the season. Obviously, Luke wanted out. Leverett's won some playing time. So we started getting him some in there. Luke was nicked up a little bit as well. So we got Leverett a little more time. They both fought hard and played hard. And we've just got to get better. If Luke's injury is fine, he'll start. But Leverett will play. In one word, I call this move moronic. <laughs> Listen, I mean, I want to err on the side where Todd Bowles has forgotten more about football than we'll ever know. But listen, accurate. being a head coach and all this stuff is, it, it goes beyond X's and O's. It goes beyond football knowledge. It goes to the, 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 the leadership of an organization and decision-making processes and all this stuff. And here's the way I see this. You've got a problem. You need a solution. And you've got to find a way to do this. The problem is they have very, very bad, for the most part, left guard play with Luke Gedeke in there in the lineup. The solution, obviously, going back to Carolina, is Nick Leverett is a better left guard. I'm not saying he's an all pro or even you know a pro bowler, but he is a better left guard. That team looked better. They ran better. Pass protection uh, was better with Nick Leverett in there. It makes no sense. To, we talked about this already. It makes no sense to pull a rookie put him back, pull him, put him back. Like it's, it's craziness. And I just wonder if this, if his injury is, is, is allowable, it's almost a way of him to set up may, you know, kind of like gauge the reaction, look at practice, talk to the team, talk to Tom Brady. And if the decision is we're not going to waffle, it's not that Luke is getting benched. It's that he's injured. So Nick is in there for an injured rookie. Yeah. And I, I wanted to look it up real quick. So I wanted to shout out Jenna Lane from ESPN. I saw her tweet about this situation. I wanted to make sure that I got it right. So I brought it up and she says, I can't say I agree with guards alternating every two series. I think you need to allow players to get into a rhythm during the game and get a feel for how defensive fronts are trying to attack them. That is my opinion. I agree 100% wholeheartedly yeah. Jenna with that exact description because as I've said a billion times on this show and our podcast before this one, the offensive line is an orchestra and right. every every section has to trust that the other sections are going to do what they're supposed to do and come in on time. And you're not going to get that cohesion and that trust when you keep swapping players in and out. Pick one and live with it, yeah. but pick one. It's five guys working as a unit. 
not six. You know, I know every once in a while eligible receiver type of deal and all that stuff, but it's five guys working as a unit. James, it just does not make sense. But what does make sense is that Buccaneers fans have a lot of emotions about the state of the team right now, including those that do not live in the United States of America. Let's hear from one of those right now. David, James, Bucks Nation, I'm coming to you this evening from the UK. It's your boy, Paddy. I'm coming to you absolutely appalled. Absolutely appalled. What an awful performance. Um, there's not really much more you can say about tonight. Um, 21-3 Panthers. The team who have just traded away arguably their best receiver. Traded away the face of their franchise in Christian McCaffrey. I, 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 down three quarterbacks. Down to their fourth string in PJ Walker. The defense, man. The defense was terrible. Absolutely terrible. That's not to say that the offense played much better. I don't I don't know what we do to turn things around at this point. I really don't. I'm hoping you guys this week have got the answers. Or at least some sort of answers. Some something to give us Bucks fans hope this week that there is a chance that we can. Turn this around because we got the Ravens next week. It's a short week as well. Thursday night football against the Ravens. Matt, if we can't stop PJ Walker, what chance do we have against Lamar Jackson? Be interested to hear what you guys have to say about all of all of what's happened in this game. Um, I hope you guys have a great week. I hope Bucks fans have a great week. Hold on to some hope. But this season is not going how we thought. Three and four. This is not good. This is not good. Have a great week, guys. James, I got to say, man, everything sounds better in a British accent, even disappointment. And at least really from does. this American's opinion, that's the case. So it's nice to get some feedback from outside of this continent, uh, just like it's good to get a helping hand from outside your own self every once in a while. And now a word from our sponsor, Better Help. Sometimes there's so much going on in life, whether it be a Buccaneers losing streak, family occurrences, or just the daily grind of adulting in the world today. And sometimes the problem feels so big, it's hard to move into problem-solving mode. But when you do solve those problems, it feels great. It makes you feel like you can take on the world. A therapist can be your partner in problem-solving and make it easier to achieve your goals. Sometimes we can't see the forest through the trees, and bringing an outside party into the fold is extremely helpful. I found that I'm more likely to be completely honest with a stranger about my hurdles, which is kind of weird, but uh, especially a stranger that's equipped with the tools I need to be successful. BetterHelp not only wants to be a part of that solution, but they have convenient, accessible, and affordable professionals ready for you online or over the phone, on camera or off camera, however you want to do it. And if you don't like your first pairing, you can go get a new one without any hassle. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can help get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash locked on. As you gear up for fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. I've talked about a catering chef job that I got because there was a job that was posted on LinkedIn Jobs that I was searching for, and I was the exact kind of candidate they were looking for. Thanks to LinkedIn Jobs, we were able to link up. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus their leading competitors. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. There are some out there who think the Buccaneers defense is in trouble as well as the offense or as much as the offense is. So we're going to dive into that here uh, in a moment. And we appreciate you being a part of the Locked On Bucks podcast. Make it your first listener, your first view as we do so. Find even more sports conversations by checking out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insight that only Locked On can provide Locked On Sports Today available on this app, YouTube, or wherever you might find your podcast. James, is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense in as much trouble as the offense? What's your answer? Absolutely not. And I, I talked about this on the postcast and, and on the full episode yesterday. If you haven't heard those, I recommend you go back and do so. 
But I think that the defense was kind of hung out to dry a little bit on Sunday. Yes, they they gave up the touchdown to DJ Moore, but after that, they they shut things down. They really kept the the Bucks in the game. They continued to get off the field on third downs, continue to try to give the offense opportunities to score. And, and, and by the end, you know, the the wheels kind of fell off because they had been out there so long. But I don't think the defense is is in nearly as much trouble as the offense is. Yeah, you know, towards the end of the game there, I didn't take it as so much as they were exhausted, although that could have been a part of it. Honestly, I felt like they were trying to do too much. I felt like the defense was really like going out there trying to make a play to to get things going in the right direction. And when you do that, you you lose discipline. And, you know, there were some other moments in the game where I think the Buccaneers defense lost discipline uh, and that hurt them. Devin White, you know, Devin White's probably the biggest gripe that I have. Zion McCollum even with some of the stuff that he did. You look, on that touchdown, the way I read that pass is he's got underneath zone. Mike Edwards has got the over-the-top zone. I don't even get mad at Mike because I just think that given how short the field was, like that's a super sharp angle to have to take when you're in that zone. And you got to watch such a big sector. You know, you can't just bail on that tight end. you got to make sure there's not somebody else coming across uh, your zone as well. So I just think it's a, a very well-designed play by the Panthers against that defense. So, I look at it more as they were trying really hard at the end of the game to make a big play, a splash play, lost discipline in that effort and got burned for it. Yeah. I mean, you, now that you mentioned it, there were a couple of times late in that game where there were, you know, runs by Foreman and, and Hubbard where these guys were getting wrapped up, you know, two, three yards. And you saw Devin White, you saw Zion, you saw, Mike Edwards, you saw these guys trying to strip the ball and it allowed Hubbard or, or Foreman to stay on their feet a little bit longer and turn a two to three yard gain into a six to seven yard gain. So you're you're 100 percent right. They were trying to make a play. They were trying to take the ball away. And, you know, the Panthers were extremely dedicated to the run. They wanted to chew up the clock and, yeah. you know, maintain their lead. And so the only option is to try to force the fumble, even on that huge run by Deontay Foreman. You saw Zion McCollum close the gap, and the first thing he does is he swings his arm straight up to try to pop that ball loose after a 60-yard gain. So, yeah, you're you're 100% right that it it did hurt them a little bit, but someone had to make a play, and the offense certainly yeah. wasn't going to do it. I, it's hard to blame them for doing it, you know what I mean? Look, takeaways are effort things. Like, like coaches and players alike will tell you that turnovers, takeaways are effort play. So they're out there trying to make that effort. And, and I mean, honestly, though, even if they don't give up those runs, can we really say the Buccaneers pull out that win anyway? I don't really think we do. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but I think the defense is in you, – you can win the way this defense is playing right now versus what the offense is doing. Yeah, no doubt about it. David, let's go ahead and hear from our good friend Benny out in L.A. before we get to stash it and trash it. Hey, James and David. This is Benny out of L.A. Hope you guys are doing great. Aside from the fact that all of us are suffering and frustrated, but also baffled, how is it possible that today's loss against the lowly Panthers is worse than the Steelers? We um, personally, I, I felt that this today's game was going to be a statement game. That finally Brady will show up, his leadership, he will elevate players, but it didn't happen. The play calling was atrocious. How is it possible that we can this this game only three points? Seriously, our defense looked atrocious. I mean, we couldn't get anything going, and it's just carrying over week after week. Do you guys think it's possible that we do have a shot at, at the playoffs or even winning the division? I mean, what do we have to do to change? I mean, I'm on board. I think Leftwich is is horrible. I don't think he's doing anything to help this offense. So Todd Bowles, is he really the right fit for us as head coach? Obviously, Bruce Arians left a major void, and we're seeing that now that in his absence. So hope to hear your thoughts. Hope you can find a way to encourage myself personally. Uh, but, yeah, <laughs> something's got to give. All right, Benny, we appreciate the call, brother. And that's going to take us into our stash it and trash it. And look, guys, I get the frustration. I really do. But my stash it is keeping Todd Bowles as the head coach of this football team. Listen, this football team was built to win the Super Bowl. It was built to win the Super Bowl two years ago. They won one. You heard Bruce Arians talk about how they weren't supposed to win one in year one. That wasn't like the plan, quote unquote, right? 
uh, but they did it anyway. Last year, a contender and save for some injuries and one of their players jump, jumping, jacking off of the team. Uh, they were very close to doing the same thing this year. There are some changes. There are some different guys. Some guys are missing. Some guys are new, but this is still a very highly competitive team. The roster is still very highly competitive. The play is not. I get all that. But if you fire your head coach, you're you're calling a squash on the entire optimism of this team. No NFL interim head coach has made the postseason since 2017. That's how like, and that doesn't seem like too too long ago. But think about how many coaches are fired in season every single year. Usually, you have about a handful. Teams do that are not looking to make the postseason, let alone win the Super Bowl. You're not doing that in Tom Brady's last year. Well, possibly last year. <laughs> but what if the interim head coach was a Super Bowl champion head coach? Bruce I Arians is not <laughs> going to take interim head coach status from Todd Bowles. I saw that on Twitter. That it was is not happening. It was a joke. I, not I, you, I'm saying, but I've seen that on Twitter. Guys, yeah. that is not happening. All right, my stash it is Mike Evans targets. Okay, I complained about how few he got against Pittsburgh, what he got against Carolina, and I get it. He dropped a walk-in touchdown. It was a bad drop. He knows it. Everyone knows it. But a 30% target share for your number one receiver? Yeah, keep doing that. Those are good things. Good things happen when you throw Mike Evans the ball, except when he drops it on a wide-open touchdown. But those are rare, and you know he's going to want to make up for it. Keep throwing him the ball i loved his involvement on sunday yeah mike evans and chris godwin like those are the two biggest reasons you have to be optimistic moving forward and and that's not good when you're talking about a team with all the names uh this one has and i don't even necessarily blame leonard fournette but it just kind of is what it is which leads me to my trash it julio jones not being on ir trash that like julio needs to be on ir bro i'm, I'm sorry i love the guy i love the name i love the history julio jones needs to be on ir there's no more analysis than that open up a roster spot move somebody in, trade a fifth-round pick to the Texans for Tyler Johnson, undo your mistake, and move on. Julio Jones needs to be on IR yesterday. Yeah, he's not playing any time in the next four weeks anyway. Just put him on, on IR, bring somebody else that can come help the team right now. My trash it, guard by committee. David, as the Buccaneers head into Thursday night and face the Baltimore Ravens, Lamar Jackson more or less than 99 and a half rushing yards. More. You're going more. See, and it's stuff like that that we disagree on, which is why I love prize picks. You pick two to five players, and if they will score more or less than their prize picks projections, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry, and you're not competing against other people like David and I do with one another all the time. It's you against the projections available and it's not just the nfl you got the nba nhl college football college basketball men's and women's tons of different sports that you can look at safe and fast withdrawals currently operational in over 30 states and canada just download the price picks app or go to pricepicks.com and sign up to play daily fantasy sports First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked On. Again, don't forget to use promo code Locked On at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Wrap things up here on the Locked On Bucks podcast, David. How do we fix the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Before we answer that question, let's hear from our good buddy, Mo, who always brightens our day whenever he calls in. Mo, what's happening? James, David, it's your boy Mo out here in San Jose. Real sad Bucks fan today. I don't know what to say. 46 yards rushing, total of 16 carries for the team. Tom Brady looks absolutely terrible. He looked absolutely terrible. This team was absolutely terrible. The play calling, terrible. The defense, the only saving grace that we have, and even those guys are, are even putting up a 50% performance. This is real hard time. This is real hard times, And this is, once again, a sad buck fan. I don't know what it's going to take I don't even think it's going to come this week. The Ravens are going to Ravens are going to beat us pretty bad, I believe, because this team isn't playing like a team that we know that they can play like. 
I don't know what needs to change. Play calling, people are saying. It, it, it's just a lack of heart on all sides. And it, and it sucks watching it as a fan. Love you guys. Love everything you do. Bucks fans to the end. But it hurts. <laughs> Go Bucks. Mo, thank you so much for the call. Though I don't like sad Mo. Sad Mo makes me even more sad. I like happy, excited Mo. Um, well, the good news is, even though this team kind of stinks right now, they are still in first place in the NFC South, which is yeah. the worst division in football. But the on the flip NFC side, slouch, that's what we're calling it. Yeah, the NFC East is also the best division in football, which I don't fully understand at all. And look, the NFL is an absolute disaster this year. It makes no sense at all why the New York teams are doing so well. It makes no, no sense why the Seahawks absolutely boat race the Chargers. Uh, and because that is the state of the NFL this year, like, look, there's the Bills, there's the Chiefs, then there's like 24 other teams that are all clumped together right here. The Bucks lose to the Steelers. They lose to the Panthers, and for absolutely no discernible reason, with no logical explanation, they'll probably blow out Baltimore like 34 to 6, and it just won't make any sense. I mean, that would be a good not make sense, though. Listen, I cover the best team in the worst division of football, and I cover the worst team in the best division. <laughs> so uh, that is that is that is who I am right now. But James, we're gonna fix the Buccaneers. Yeah, and we we're are just gonna do it in 90 seconds or less. I will go first that easy here's how you fix the buccaneers defense keep doing what you're doing even with some of your flaws got it get healthier that's all you got to do offense two running backs i don't care if it's co keith and lenny i don't care if it's rashad and lenny rashad and co you know let's get if we're not going to trade Keyshawn, let's get him back there with lenny with rashad a little bit too and we're doing everything left to right we're going to run we're going to run sweeps to the right. We're going to run sweeps to the left. Sweeps to the left. We're going to do screens to the right. We're going to do screens to the left with the running backs and the wide receivers. We'll even throw them in a tight end screen every once in a while. And then once the defense is nice and tired, we're going to run one of those backs up the middle with a K dot and running a seam route. So the linebacker, you got to choose. You follow in the tight end over the seam where Tom Brady loves to throw, or you or are you are you staying up short for the running back wherever the linebacker isn't. Tom, throw the ball there. They're tired. They're running from boundary to boundary. That is how you fix this Buccaneers offense. It's still going to be dink and dunk. It's not going to be a lot of huge plays, but you get the defense tired, and now they're just leaning on Luke Gedeke. And let me tell you what Luke can do. Luke can hold a guy up. He may not be able to stop him from running, but once he's tired, he can just hold him up for a few seconds, and Tom can hit those deep routes. Mike Evans will not drop a touchdown pass like that ever again. That's how I fix the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, James. Uh, I like a lot of what you said. Uh, I'm, I like I'm all of it. Of course you do. Uh, defense, I'm with you. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see a little bit more. We we saw some flashes out of Joe Tryon, Shoyinka there for a few weeks yeah. in a row. He was silent. Shaq Barrett was silent. Nassib, Nelson, the edge rushers were completely silent. They can't be against the Ravens. They are going to have to contain Lamar. But yeah. on the offensive side of the ball, I need more of the rookies. Give me more targets for Kate Otten. Give me more routes for Kate Otten. Yeah, you know, that seam route that he ran against the Panthers was a thing of beauty. That's a Gronk route. It is. That's exactly That's what it is. I need more Rashad White. And it's I love Lenny. I do. This is yeah. not a shot against him. But Rashad White has earned more opportunities, whether that's in the passing game or it's in the running game. He looks like he's running more decisively, more effectively. And if you're going to try to pick up a third and one, I actually, at this moment in time, trust Rashad White to get that yard more than I trust Leonard Fournette. At the same time, I, I don't mind the dink and dunk thing. Let's let's run the Michael Thomas offense slants all the way down the field. You have these massive big body receivers. You mean to tell me they can't box a guy out and get six yards on every single play? It'll happen. Mm -hmm. I need I need more of the short, quick passes that aren't screens but let these receivers use their body to create some space, create opportunity and continue to move the chains. Eventually you're going to run out of field and you're going to find the end zone. So I need more of the rookies. I need more of the quick, you know, short passes to your big receivers and you know, things will start to get better. That's just, yeah. 
Last That's thing I want to say before we wrap this episode, James, um, you caught some flack in the YouTube comments and on the Twitter space for criticizing Tom Brady a little bit. Listen, I'm, I'm just going to say this. Tom Brady deserves some of the blame for this thing, too, and specifically against Carolina. Look, players, it's their job. Receivers, tight ends, running backs, linemen, it's your job to understand where you line up for a given play in a given formation. Got it. But it's also the quarterback's responsibility to make sure his formation is lined up correctly. And that illegal formation penalty they got earlier in the, early in the game, they got lined up with 13 seconds left on the play clock. Tom's got nothing but time to scan it and make sure all of his guys are in the right place. You put Chris Godwin on the line of scrimmage where he's supposed to be. That game is a game, not a penalty. And there were multiple occasions. Jonathan Vilma dialogued him on 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 the during the game broadcast where Tom actually had a clean pocket with Gedeke in there, without Gedeke in there, had clean pockets, missed guys at the end of the first half. Tell me that Tom Brady in, in his best game runs five of the remaining 12 seconds off the clock, scanning the field, trying to find somebody and then throwing it in triple coverage. Tom is off his game. On point, Tom Brady gets rid of that thing at 10 seconds, throws it to the sideline, or he hits the wide open guy who, by the way, is on the sideline, saves about three or four seconds, gains some yards, and then you have time to try to get into field goal range. That's what Tom Brady does. Tom is not playing Tom Brady brand of football, even when he has the right protection. Tom definitely deserves some blame. Not all of it, maybe not even 51% of it, but he does deserve some. So y'all put away the Brady love just a little bit and give my, my co-host here a break here. He's not wrong that Brady deserves some of the blame here. Much appreciated. Good, sir. And I'm sure coming up tomorrow, Evan Klosky. Is At D Harrison 82. Hit me up. <laughs> At me. Uh, Evan Klosky is going to have plenty to say about Tom Brady and the Buccaneers performance, but we're also on a short week. So we're going to start to look ahead to the Baltimore Ravens when Evan joins me on tomorrow's show. Confident and concerned about coming up, predictions coming up. But we want to thank you for making Locked on Bucks your first listen every day. Make sure your second listen or view is Locked on Sports Today, available on this app on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Check out everything David is doing over at BucksGameDay.com. Check out my work over at BucksNation.com. Of course, follow everything on Twitter at Locked On Bucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks, and at DHarrison82. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire those cannons. We thank you so much for joining us right here at Locked On Bucks. <laughs>